All right, yeah. we are we are live? Question mark. Probably. Probably. I don't know. Hang on, I'll check. I have no We're idea what's happening. Oh, we are cool. Uh, I can pull up Twitch chat. Oh shit! Just in case anyone was watching. <clears throat> hey everyone, sorry I'm doing a new setup. So we'll see how this goes. Harry moved houses. Yay! Yeah, I'll be I'll be here for a while. I'm staying with uh, Saturn and Tech for a little while. Yes. Spoilers. I have a wedding to go to. Yeah, and you'll see a bunch of dogs. Those are their dogs. <laughs> so, yeah, they'll provide sound effects throughout the night. Um, that will be Too accurate. Bad the... Too bad we got rid of the sled dogs. Yeah, yeah. I can so, turn into a dog. So let's go ahead and just uh, jump right in uh, to tonight's session. So. Um, our heroes, the meddlers, have been navigating through the ancient city of Yithrin. And last time, they were navigating through the library, where they found a creature known as an Arcanoloth, um, searching for some books about the outer plains inside this ancient library. And he also had a large-sized um, albino blind penguin uh, following him around. Um... Upon entering the library, the Arcanoloth thought that the, our heroes were librarians and uh, rudely asked them to help him get some books. Um, as Xena went to go help him uh, reach books off the top shelf with her height, um, the penguin passed her a message on a leather scrap of paper saying, help me. Um, it was then, through some shenanigans, uh, that Xena managed to convince the Arcanoloth, intimidate him, into thinking that he needed to have a library card in order to get the books. Um, and then they were able to trade a library card uh, for the Penguin's freedom. And so now, they have the Penguin with them. His name is Kingsport. And they are back to exploring the rest of this ancient city filled with magic and wonder and secrets and all that other good stuff. So, you all have exited this library, and just for the map, it's right here in the center of the map here. And you were still kind of going in the semicircle, searching through each of the landmarks that you see. And the next area was this Arboretum, which is an area filled with trees. So, is that where you'd like to go still? I mean, if that's okay with everyone else, I think that should be okay. Yeah. We were yeah. told there was a Trent there, right? Sure. sure. Yes, there is. Okay. Uh, Vincent Trent? No, not that Trent. Oh, damn it. Okay, I'm going to move you all to this map. It's a pretty sweet map. Brought to you by some random dude from the internet. Thank you, guy. Okay. Eh, six out of ten. Um, as you approach, uh, you do, by the way, still have, you have a penguin and also that random guy that you guys let free from the prison uh, yes, a long a time ago. Prisoner person. Yeah, he's still bound and you, and I guess Jeff is keeping an eye on his ass, uh, as you all make your way through. You see, um, as you enter this arboretum that there's a canopy of golden leaves that crowns the trees inside a sunken basin. Um, the trees grow in stark contrast to their bleak surroundings, their branches swaying even though the air is deathly still. What do you do? I'd uh, like to see if we notice any enemies. Yes. I'll do my detect magic. Make perception I'll... check. Commune with nature. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, and... commune with nature. Yeah. Detect magic. Like magic, all right, so you all are doing all manner of rituals. Yeah, Xena, you don't, um, let's see, you don't see any enemies out of the ordinary, but you do see, like, straight ahead is a large tree, bigger than all the rest in the middle of this place. And um, you can tell just by looking at it that this thing is a living tree. It's a treant. Um, and from the looks of it right now, it appears to be sleeping. It's going... Do I know if they're, like, good or bad? Uh, make a... Um, make a nature check. Uh, 
You have no clue. No idea. I mean, that's nature intelligence, right? I could give it a shot. Yeah. You have no that idea seems, either. <laughs> that seems accurate for Glare. Look at that as a tree. Cool. Would I would I have a general idea given my background as growing up in the Fey the Feywild? Yeah, you would. You would know that treants um typically guard their guardians of some sort. They usually guard a grove or some such thing like that. Um, but they don't swing they can swing in either direction, good or evil. They don't necessarily have to go uh one particular way. Um, at that point, Mina will uh, sort of whisper to you all, and she will say, Now we need to find a way to get some of those branches for ourselves to make those wands for the prophecy. Or for the ritual, sorry. I mean, uh, can we just ask them? <laughs> yes. We could. Might be able to sneakily carve some off as well. Yeah, uh, Up to you let's all. See. I'll let you all handle taking it. taking off their arms and legs? <laughs> well, they, you know, they're plants, so it's it's not a huge problem for them to grow it back, you know, over time. We don't need many. Yeah. Just enough for one, two, three, four, five ones. Yeah, I think we have enough things in here trying to kill us. I don't want the trees also helping. Oh, very well. Handle it however you'd like. Yeah. Will my community nature have gone off yeah it, well, let's say it does and what is remind me again what are you trying to get uh gather from this spell uh i'll just cast it cool uh base so well not hard casting but i did it in my ritual yeah uh i want to find prevalent plants yep. specifically oaks if i can get that type of information mm -hmm. i want to search for powerful fiends or un and or undead. Okay. Um. One sec. Uh. Da -da 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 -da. Fiends are undead. You said and plants. The prevalent plants. Yes. Okay. No you plants, sense but... that there is one large plant. Uh, straight ahead. And then sort of underneath the ground, around it, are four other plant creatures, but you cannot see them. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of surrounding the bigger one. But they're... Yeah, but they're like... Um, you, would, you would think with that spell that they're like underground or... Uh, but the whole, the, the whole tree in, in front of you appears to be sleeping. I don't advise trying to sneak up on it while it's asleep. It's protected by other plants, I think. Okay. Uh, what about fiends or undead? No fiends or undead. Okay. Whew. I guess I'm going to step forward. Okay. And call in Sylvan. Hello. Uh, okay. The tree rouses from its slumber and goes, Hello. Who goes there and disturbs my slumber? Oh my god, it's tree beard. <laughs> my name is Relbin. This is Glare, Jeff, Xena, and Mina. And, uh, and Rando forever. number one, Rando number two. This is going to take forever. <laughs> it might be worth it to take our time. I deeply enjoy. My time. You came through muffled. I deeply enjoy my time. <laughs> ah, yes. 
Well, we're here on a quest to stop the ever the unending winter potentially be ca being caused by Arl, the Frost Maiden. Are you participating in the creation of this winter to make others suffer? What was the first bit? God damn it. Yeah. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> I don't know why it always says it to you and not me. <laughs> well, it's not I... cutting out. It's coming out muffled. Like he's... I think it's just because of the beard. You he's he's asking if um he's asking if you are planning to aid in this endless winter to cause more suffering. No, in fact, we're here to try and put an end to it if we can. Then I shall not give you what you ask. Be gone from this place. Why will you not... Are you... Working with Oral? I will only give... My branches to those who would intend... To perform nefarious deeds. I'm about to perform a nefarious deed right now. Sounds like we're gonna have to kill it. I'm gonna. Hmm. I'm gonna look to Mina. She looks back at you. <laughs> You're the one who said they're evil. Maybe you can convince it. Uh, yeah. Mina will step up and she'll be like, "Oh yes, yes. I prefer. I plan to perform many nefarious deeds in the name of these wands that I will create, and um." Yeah, I can vouch for that. She is a she is a complete bitch. I have the command of many devils. I um, have been known to rabble rouse in the city of Waterdeep. So, if you would allow me to have some of your branches, I would happily carry out more nefarious deeds in your name. Good tree, sir. And she will try to make a persuasion check. <laughs> I have no idea. This is going to work. I don't even know what her persuasion is. <laughs> it's based off wisdom, so I don't imagine... I do not believe you. What? Now be... God damn it. It says, I do not believe you. Hmm. All right, look here, asshole. Give us the branches or I start breaking them off. Uh, I draw my sword. Well, I guess this is going to go down. Roll for initiative! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we all know that this is the point where he'd start doing that. <laughs> yeah. Control. Yeah, I wasn't expecting an evil Trent. Uh, 16 for me, please, Perry, if it gives me the 7. Which it okay. will, because I rolled that second. You getting my oh. DMs, Perry? Uh, no. Hold on. One sec. It's hard for. Sorry. It's just really hard to. It's a different setup. You're fine. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, yeah. I guess my mic is really jacked up. I think it's just noise canceling it because it's a different mic. It's like it's hitting the noise. The but noise you guys there. can hear me okay on the same mic, right? Yeah, I just to be honest, I think it really was just the tone you were using for the Trent because it wasn't yeah. having issues before then. I think it's I think it's the noise gate when you do uh, the Trent voice. Okay, yeah. well, I'll, I'll not do the Trent voice then. Okay, so uh, where was I in the initiative thing? Yeah, let's see. Uh, we did the Trent. Actually, most of us rolled fairly high. We all yeah. High. That's weird. I know. I don't trust it. I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Priya rolled a 33. Oh, yeah, let me roll for me and uh. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I should definitely check to see how many spell slots I have left. Uh, I am at 16, by the way, not seven. All right, Mina's gonna go first. 
Um, let me pull up this guy's stats, because I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. Uh, oh, this is going to be good. Uh, Mina will tap you... Well, she's probably... She's probably still on like near Xena's leg. So Mina will tap Xena on the leg, and Xena, you will feel this arcane energy begin to course through your uh, body, and your um, fists begin to course with flames. Oh, that's so cool! And she'll be like, and then she'll just hide behind your leg. Like, what does that mean? Well, take care of this. Means when you punch, fire extra fire damage. Okay. This creature, God, it's so loud. Okay, this creature underneath uh, will pop out of the ground, and this sort of Groot-looking creature will burst out of the ground near the tree, and it looks kind of like. Um, Tell me they're not lights. They are. Oh, I can't show you them. Oh well, yeah, they look like they look like evil Groots. Basically, I know what they are. Coming to attack you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, here they come. The first one is going to shoot needles at uh, Xena. Oh, but they miss wildly. Natural one. Uh, How do you miss that? As they fly off into the distance, and it will move forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right here. Alright. Uh, so, Relbin, you're up. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. I'm gonna cast Summon Fae at 4th level. Okay. I'm gonna pop it right here. And these squares work, so it's gonna be moving to attack. Sorry, I'm just grabbing it from the... I thought I had a... Already one with stats on it, but I guess not. Huh. All right, I'll put it right. Uh, where do you want it? Uh, that works. Okay. Because they're gonna have it face step. It's a fuming mode, so. Yep. I have it face step. Oh, first I get some of my unicorn. Okay. Right here. Okay. That should cover everyone in most of the battlefield. Yeah, I'm gonna go get the unicorn now. Okay, you're putting the unicorn where? Uh, right here. Alright, cool. Alright, so you guys watch as this uh, beautiful golden unicorn made of fey lights begins dancing in the space right next to the blight there, and a golden satyr also appears nearby, as Relbin's familiar magic is taking effect. Gonna have it... I'm gonna have the familiar face step there. Yep. And it's got advantage. Yep. So it's with my uh, proficiency bonus, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead and make an attack roll. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Alright, let me just... I always forget the damage. Uh, okay, 1d6 plus 7 plus 1d6. Uh, okay. The Eleven yeah, piercing two force. Sure. So your your um your satyr just takes its golden quarter staff and breaks the blight into two giant pieces. It is dead. Okay. Anything else with your turn? Nope. Okay, Jeff, you're up. Uh, I bet. I wish there was a way to roll advantage on them. 16? Yeah. There is on roll 20. Is there? Yeah. 
Uh, open your character sheet. Yes. Click the gear. Oh, it says and advantage on initiative switch. I can't hear you, uh, uh, Tech, if you're... Oh, I'm not talking yet. I'm looking. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sorry. I, I was letting them finish. Okay. Sorry, no, it's good. Okay. I'm not going to try it right now because I already got my initiative thing done. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to, like, like stick my sword in the ground beside me and be like, Alright, we don't have fucking time for this shit right here. Now I'm going to cast Hex Place Curse on the tree end. Okay, are you within 30... Is it 30 feet? Um, I, I thought it was... Hold on. Sony actions now. Oh, I think okay. it's six. Hexblade's curse, I think, is short. Uh, yeah, it's thirty feet. You're right. All right, fine, 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 fine. Hold on. I know, cause I played a Hexblade Warlock. Before. Was it using D and D Beyond? It was using D and D Beyond. Oh I can't God. get close enough. You know what? Fine, screw it. Huh. Yeah. So I'm gonna move up to here, behind the satyr, and instead of casting Headsplay Curse, I'm slow. I'm just, oh my god, I'm just gonna cast Blight. Blight? Oh, oh shh! Oh, oh. Blight? I do. Oh, oh no! Uh, oh man! Constitution saves. <laughs> uh, 18. That's also a DC 19 from me now, by the way. Oh, 19? Yeah, that's because a Because of the fail. stone, buddy. <laughs> Wait, wait. The good luck stone? That's for your saves. That's for your. No, no, no. Well, maybe it's not the stone. What oh, the is sword. It? Oh. The sword was, should have already been in plus two, though. I think I don't know. It says nineteen on my uh, on my uh, thing. Oh damn. yeah. The... Yeah, I mean, if it says nineteen, it's it's nineteen. So. Yeah. Yep. It says seventeen. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm sorry that I like have really high. No, no, you're fine. I just want to make yeah. sure. Okay, so yeah. go ahead and roll damage. Isn't it uh, max damage on plants? A max double damage now because it's it's double me. damage. So yeah, just go ahead and roll uh, yeah. roll the dice and then we'll double it. Let's see what is that? That's a that's a that's a ninety eight F. Yeah, just roll it. How many? Wait, how many dice? <laughs> it's a fifth level spell. It's ninety eight. Yup. So, so that does sixty eight damage. <laughs> You guys watch as the tree itself begins to wither, like right before your eyes. <laughs> There's still a lot of tree, though. My white says 8d8. Yeah, his yeah, is up one level higher. Yeah, mine's cast at the fifth level, so I add a d8. As he fires this black beam from his hand, <laughs> he watches the trees and the branches begin to wither and turn gray. It hasn't affected the whole thing, but it is doing a substantial, substantial amount of damage. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty hard after that. All right, I pick the sword back up and I just ready up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Glad you're up. All right, well that kind of changes my plan, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's. See. I was not expecting you to have blight. <laughs> Remember, I'm kind of a hybrid right now, so. Yeah, that's fine. All right, Glare is going to get down all fours and charge in. <laughs> And I guess I'm gonna swing at it with Fragorac! Actually, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, we'll do Fragorac for one hit. Let's do Fragorac. Okay. That is a... Not sure. Hold on. Might not pierce with that. I, I doubt it hit. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's, you, you hit it. It's a giant tree. But it's not enough to, like, leave it a substantial mark into it as it's kind of thick. Try it again! Yep. Yeah, that time you do. You, you hammer it again in the same spot, this time taking a bit more force into it. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, 14 points of damage. That's max damage. Uh, is that bludgeoning? That is bludgeoning. Alright, so it doesn't do as much as you thought. Yeah. Alright, alright, alright. But it's looking quite hurt as you're seeing splinters of it begin to break off at this point. Uh, I already have temp health, so that'll be my turn. Okay. Xena, your turn. We're just gonna hit it. Alright. Go ahead and roll an attack. Can you move me? Like, to make sure... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think you have 55 movement. So, you can probably... Yeah, you can get right up there. Um, and you actually can be 10 feet away from it. Oh, yeah, with your reach. reach. 
So you're sort of looming over glare, and you're just <laughs> punching into this giant tree with your flaming fists that Mina has magically empowered. Uh, I don't think this tree has too long in this world. Yeah, uh, I, I was expecting to have to cast something else, but I, I'm going to hold it now. <laughs> right. So you got to add an extra 1d4 fire damage to all your punches here. I'm just saying, if it's not dead before my next turn, I'm going to kill it. I'm trying to figure out what to roll. Oh, okay. It uh, should be your attack roll for your fists. The uh, On the other section... Of your D&D doesn't let me hit it to roll it. Oh really? Let me try it. There we go. Does that work? Oh yeah, that is a uh, that is a hit right there. Uh, Thirty-one to hit. Uh, dear God. Can you roll one D four for me, Saturn, while I roll the other? All right. So the first punch. And I'm gonna, yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a second punch. And do you want to do your flurry of blows, or? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, what the fuck? Okay, um... Hold on, this is a lot of math now. Okay. Jesus so, Christ, this poor fucking tree. So, six points of... So, go ahead and roll another... Let's see how many of these hit. First one hits, second is a miss. Uh, so, miss, miss. And then a critical hit for the last strike. Okay. So, go ahead and roll... Well, let me roll for this. So, this is going to be a crit. So I'm going to roll 46 plus 8. At 2d4. Yeah. 8 plus 2d4. 46. Oh, Sorry, a lot of math here. Oh, Saturn rolled a 2d4. Okay. So then... Alright, so we'll take Saturn's rolls for the D4s. Okay, let's calculate this. Alright, so uh, the total here is 12 plus 2, 14, 15 plus 8 is 23 halved because of the bludgeoning damage. Uh, so that's 11 points of damage on the first, on that, on that critical hit. But the fire damage gets doubled, so that's 12 points of fire damage, as it is vulnerable to fire. So that strike does a crap load of fire damage. Uh, and then for your other strike, it's going to do 6 points of damage, because it's halved from the bludgeoning, but at 4 points of damage from the fire, because it's vulnerable. So you're looking very, very hurt as you're punching into this thing, and parts of it are lighting a flame, as its, its leaves and stuff are burning up and turning into black ash. Uh, it won't let me edit my character sheet. Also, can you give me two points to my tattoo? Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. Uh, okay. One, two, there you go. Alright, that's it for Xena's turn. Now it's all the Needle Blights. They're coming for you. All of them. Uh, would Xena have to be beside me to hit it? Just checking. What? I'm just checking if Xena's beside Glare or not. She's about... Uh, she's five feet away from you. Uh, shit, okay. Oh, oh. boy, that's good. Okay, so one of them is gonna go up to Xena. One of them is gonna... And then the other two are gonna go to Glare. The one going after Xena is gonna have disadvantage. Uh... Okay. It's gonna try to hit you with his claws. Does it 18 hit? Xena? 18. Your AC is 18? Oh, it's 19, so 19. it misses. Yeah, so you move your leg out of the way as it tries to hit you with its claw, but finds no purchase. The other two will try to attack you, Glare. Yep. 20 and an 18. 
Uh, I don't have my bonus yet, so yeah, 20 hits. Okay, you take six points of piercing damage as one of them manages to claw through your armor. The other one, however, you put your shield up in time uh, before it's able to hit you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now it's the trance turn. It's going to slam down on you, Claire. I swear if you crit this again. Uh, only one of them hits, so boom, it comes down with this gigantic branches boom, down on your body. 17 points of bludgeoning damage as you are hit by the massive treant. I'll take it. Alright, and that's it for the trance turn. Uh, Mina is going to fly over here, and she is going to shoot a ball of lightning at one of the needle blights on um, Zena. Uh, and you watch uh, Zena by your by your shin down there. Um, a ball of lightning shoot out and and sort of light the needle blight on fire as it bursts and dies at your feet. And that's it for Mina's turn. All right, Relvin, you're up. Okay. I'm gonna move up here, and I'm going to produce flame on the big guy. Okay, go for it. Twenty-two. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, it deals double damage, even though it's a low roll. Yeah. So eight points of damage as it's you. You all are burning away at it, but it's still alive. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna command. Uh, what's how's Glero feeling? I'm above half health. Okay. Bonus action and move my unicorn up here. Okay. So, where? Okay. Yeah, okay. that works. Then I command my fey. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, never mind. It wouldn't matter last turn anyways. I've got this guy, the satyr has multi-attack. <laughs> yep. Uh, I command it to move to here. I can't move it. And then fey step right here. Yep. And smack Stabby, stabby. Okay, so you watch as the, the satyr sort of teleports up there near the treant and the needle blights right next to you, Glare, as you've taken these heavy hits, and it is going to whack them. 17? 17 hits. Which one are you targeting? The big tree or the... Big tree. Yeah, go for it. Uh, 11 piercing, 1 force. Okay, 11 piercing, 1 force. So that's 5 points of piercing damage, uh, because it's halved, and then 1 force. Okay. Right. Right. Back again. Whoops. So I'm still getting used to this keyboard. Go for it. 19. That hits. One roll damage. Yep. So it's slamming into the tree as hard as it can. Some of the damage is resisted as it's made of wood, but you're making dents into it. Okay, so that's 13 halved. So that's six points of damage with the strike and then another four points of force. Yep. Okay. It's looking really hurt at this point. Really, really and hurt. And that's my turn. Okay. And Jeff, that's played again. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you're up. It's looking pretty hard at this point. As branches are falling and leaves are turning gray and dead. You know what? I, instead of casting Blight, I'm going to just step up. And then cast X Place Curse and I'm going to double damage. Okay. Go I'm going to say that spell slot. Just in case. Alright, uh, yeah, how do you want to do this? 
So, um, I want to hack off the limb that we actually need. Yep. Let it fall on glare, and then hack it in half. Huh. So glare, <laughs> this thing hits you on the head as it falls off the tree. No, it does not. I put my shield up. To you try put your shield up. <laughs> as it happens, everything I see out of the corner of my eye that actually fell, I was like, "Sorry." <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, and the tree sort of just withers and groans. It's dead. But there's still more enemies. So glare, you're up. Well, they're resistant to bludgeoning. Glare's going to strike out with the Thunder Gauntlet instead, then. Go for it. Uh, I'll target the one to my left first. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Thunder damage. Your left. Okay. And I will switch targets and target the one on my right with the second one. All right. Both of them, you watch the splinters fly off through the air as these two Groot-looking creatures begin yeah. to break apart. Uh, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. 13. That one just, you explode that one with the other gauntlet. <laughs> no bunch of splinters. Resist that! <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's my turn. Alright, Xena, you're up. There's one left down on the floor right by Glare. It's a Groot looking, evil looking Groot creature. Can you mark a key off from the last time since it doesn't let me edit my character sheet? Yeah. What? Sorry. I don't then, know. So I want to hit that twice. But Go for I it. can't click to hit, so you'll okay. we'll have to do it. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if it's a permission you have to grant or what, but it just will not let me use anything except for the skills. Alright, well. Let's see if that hits. Yep, that hits. So you just crush it. You just, you know, punch down in the ground, and it breaks into a million pieces. And that's it. I totally softened that one up for you. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, just saying. Will you put another uh -huh. point to my tattoo? Yeah. How's everyone sure. self looking? Uh, I'm at 50 out of 93. Everyone else? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good. Can you try refreshing the page and see if that helps? I did try that. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, that's fine. I don't use roll 20 for my rolls usually, so I don't know if I have the same problem. Hang on. Anyway, so uh, what do you all do now? The tree is sort of found, sort of burnt and withered and uh, beaten. And there's a branch, however, that Jeff managed to cut off with the last strike. You guys couldn't have gone a little bit easier, you know. It would have been nice to have some more of this material. It's got to be magical. Oh, I would have had to roll constitution saves, actually, because of my, uh... Let's see, I got hit twice? <laughs> As I'm walking up to take a look at the branch with him, I say, Well, I could have cast Blight on it again. I, uh, I'd rather you didn't do that. Sorry. I'll do another one. Well, that's the whole reason I didn't, Cat. So we'd have something to use. Yeah, I don't have to detect magic going anymore. All right, well, that's a shame. <laughs> Wait, isn't it uh, Glare is going to pull out the uh, tool that he got mm -hmm. and turn it into a hatchet and start trying to see if he can get some usable branches from this to make wands. Okay. Yeah, you have no problem doing that. And you do end up with... purpose tool. Yeah, and you end up chopping and sort of carving these wands down. Um, and you end up with five sort of long wizardly wands made out of this nether oak tree. Great, well I've got the base for it right now. I'm going to say a sylvan prayer for the trant. Excellent. Yes. You say a prayer uh, for the treant. Yes. Go ahead. Is there anything else around here that looks like it might stand out? No. Just silence. No, no uh, any plants or anything like that we can harvest for regents or anything? Uh, make a perception check. I'm gonna help that. I'm not rolling well tonight. Uh, I'm gonna pause for one second see if I can fix her character sheet problem real quick, but you all continue to roleplay. Okay. It's a shame we had to kill the creature. 
uh, well, it's kind of an asshole, apparently, so you know what? We probably did everyone a favor. I know. I'm just saying, like, it's probably not, like, a normal tree end. Obviously, it was an evil one, so you don't have to feel too bad about it. I do, and I don't. All right. Like, well, I guess that, I guess that's all I can do for now. <clears throat> right, so I've got the wands we need, so until we find out more about the ritual, I'm just going to leave them as is. Hmm. Well, I am waiting to see if my horrible roll was actually good enough to see anything. <laughs> I probably should have made a separate roll instead of helping you. Eh, I'm not rolling well tonight, apparently. Yeah. It's my night for that. I'm just curious to see what I would have rolled. Watch me roll lower than you. Eh. No. One of them. <laughs> I am trained in perception, but that's still only a plus six. Ah. Uh, oh well. Actually, if we wait ten minutes, <laughs> I can well, it find. Takes, it probably takes me just that long to get the wands, like the pieces of wood prepped. So, uh, all right, we uh, fixed the we'll we fixed the character sheet. All okay. right, that's that's good. It was all your fault, I know. Yeah, I know. It was all my fault. Okay. Uh, so, you say a prayer for the deceased Trant, and you all... Chopping it up. <laughs> yeah, as a glare. <laughs> um, but you do have five wands now, uh, ready to go from this thing. And yeah, so now you can pick where you'd like to go again. Before we go anywhere, I'd like to commune with nature real quick. Okay. Go ahead. For any plants that can be used in for healing or magical purpose uh, magical properties. Oh yeah, let me check that real quick. One moment. Sorry, I actually didn't expect you all to do this here, but it makes sense. Uh, okay, you uh, go ahead and make a survival check. All right. Yeah, you Damn. you find uh, four sage root. Ooh. Four sage root. In the surrounding woods. That is a base for a healing potion. Yes, it is. Very nice. Okay. Some of those, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Because Glare keeps getting whomped by everything. That's while him. while they're out there searching for roots and things like that, Zena, make a Constitution saving throw for me. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. Uh. Okay, you uh, you feel yourself about to throw up onto the ground as your as this this rumbling feeling in your stomach begins to come up, and you just barely manage to hold your mouth over <laughs> and keep it from coming out. Both of the matters, you know. Um, I don't know what's wrong. When you look down at your hand, you see that there's little bits of black sludge. Oh no, it's back again. What's back again? That night, remember? When you stayed in the room? Oh. Oh, right. The, uh, demon blood thing that shadow books you. Right. Uh, uh Mina, can I talk to you for a sec? <laughs> you say Mina? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, yeah, she'll fly up and she'll be on her broom, sort of hovering over Xena's hand, and she'll be like, Mind if I take a sample of that? Yeah. Sis? Okay, she will hop onto your hand, and she will... You'll see her pull out from her 
black bag that she has on her side, a small vial, and almost like a test tube type thing, and she will grab a little sample of it and cork it, and she'll look at it, and she'll begin inspecting it, and um, then she'll hop off your hand and fly down to Blair, and she will look at it, and she'll hold it out. She'll be like, hmm, infernal blood. I'll have to study it to see what I can make of this. But perhaps next time we rest, so you learn some more. Either. Okay, that's what I was kind of wondering. Okay, nope, that's fine. Uh, I'll study it more too then. I was hoping you might know something about it with all your you know, demon-loving stuff. It's definitely of infernal origin, some type. Um, tell me, sister, have you been... Other than obviously feeling sick, have you felt any different, realized any changes on your body or in how you feel? Well, yeah, I'm throwing up black bile. Other than that, so I mean, what else is that happening? Would be obvious. Well, I noticed there was like a shadow in the bed with me one time. Excuse me? Was... A shadow? Yeah, like, it was, like, laughing at me or something. Yours or someone else's? I... I don't know. It was just there for a brief second, and then it disappeared, and sometimes I feel like there's shadows that are helping me sometimes, oddly enough, that I'm not controlling. Glare will kind of lead over to me and just like, okay, look, she's like, every now and then we see this, like, creepy shadow thing show up, and it, like, helps her or... Gets her out of danger and shit, and I'm just, I'm really starting to worry. Very peculiar. Alright. It, it usually grins evilly. I'm actually kind of yeah. starting to wonder if that's actually not her. <laughs> it kind of gives me the creeps. Alright, well. More than Jeff. You see that she looks a bit worried. Mm. Like, she looks a little worried, and she says, I'll, um, I'll make it my top priority. And I'll start looking through some of these old books I have. Why am I not surprised you have books on... I have loads books. of books. Yeah, I know you do. Fine. Let me know what you need of me. I can at least give you tools you need. Thank you. Um, Alright, so while you guys discuss all that stuff and are making your way through more of the city, you do see some various landmarks. Um, and as you look out among this city, this necropolis, um, did I move you all to the map, by the way? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. oh, I, just, yep, we're on the map. I just clicked off the map, so I said that. Um, you notice that this, like, ancient Nethery city has these, like, street lamps that, while this place would normally be very dark, there are these street lamps that give off, like, um, hues of purple and green on the black, icy floor of this uh, frozen wizard city. And so you're able to navigate through all the rubble and other things uh, in the city here. And the two things that you see nearby, you see a tower over here that you haven't been to that's basically straight north from the um, Arboretum. And you see a... Another interesting well-like area next to it, yeah. right there, to the right. And those are the two primary areas of interest. There's also like a, like almost like a, a city center important area over towards this place, but it's a bit further away. But those two are probably the nearest. It's one of the towers and another well. Do we see any sigils on that tower? Uh, yes. And uh, Mina would let you know that that is the sigil of divination. Divination. Oh, great. We have so many so many of us with divine power. Great. Okay. Well, let's go into the tower, I say. Okay. You make your way to the Tower of Divination. I'm going to move you to a map. Yay, everyone's favorite. It's map time. Yay! <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so you all arrive at this Tower of Divination. One second. 
Um, you see that as you approach the tower, you see um, silver arcane symbols are etched around a large eye near the pointed peak of this thin tower. Uh, and that's the symbol of divination. It's like a big eye ball. Um, and there's an arched doorway that leads into the base of the tower. Um, yeah. And you see that... Oh. My Discord just crashed. My disc. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hello. Hey, sorry. I don't know what happened, but Discord just literally closed itself for no reason. It happens to me all the time. <gasps> oh. Suffer like we do. <laughs> it just it just randomly closed. Okay, well that's interesting. Um. Yeah. So okay. Well, I don't think these guys are actually supposed to be out here. I think they're supposed to be inside. But let me just move that. Okay. Um, yeah, so as you approach, there is a door in front of your way. This, like, iron door. Hmm. I would love to kick it in, but I have the strange feeling that that won't work this time. Come uh, on, you know you want to try. I'm going to go ahead and put my hand on the door, and this time not even... Actually, I'm going to do detect magic first. That's going to be the friggin' thing I need to do. Okay. So you take a few Very minutes lost. to do the te detect magic. Um, you don't detect anything uh, right now at the door. Oh, wait a minute. Hi. I am going to cast a ghostly gaze. Ooh. And remind, and, uh, remind me what that does. What does that do? Once per short rest, as an action, you gain the ability to see through solid objects with dark vision to a range of 30 feet for one Holy minute. shit. Where'd okay. you get that? Uh, it's a racial, or it's a warlock ability. <laughs> all right. Don't fucking ask me, dude. I just have all these cool-ass little fucking gadgets now. All right, so I would say you probably go up to the door, right? And then, cat, and then yeah, do that? Yeah, just kind of peer in, see yeah. what I can see. Yeah, so 30 feet, you said? Okay, let me see. Um... Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, it's pretty good enough to see most everything in there. Uh, so, so, yeah, in there, when you look through the wall, you see that there are um, three creatures, there should only be three, uh, three creatures of those blue, blue-skinned blue humanoids that you've fought and seen before. You played, like, Chain Lightning against them, Blitzball, whatever you want to call it, and you all um, have fought them a few times. You see three of them in the room. And you see uh, large spheres of varying colors and size that are strewn about the floor of this circle room. Uh, there are words that are engraved in draconic script all along the wall. Um, there's a metal construct with concentric metal rings uh, that projects out of the mystifyingly starry ceiling 30 feet above and blurry images dance between the stars overhead in your peripheral vision though with this it's kind of dark uh, dark vision so it's almost like a like a mini planetarium type deal yeah exactly so i'll just kind of relay all that to everybody and just be like you know constellations and, and, ceiling and everything and oh yeah three little blue man group bad guys if you want, um, since you saw them, go ahead and make a intelligence, I'll say history check, to see if you know what each of the planets are. Ooh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you're not sure what they are. You do recognize one of them. Uh, it's pretty obviously the sun. Uh, there's one big, yellow, fiery-looking one, and you're like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's probably the sun. So, yeah, I'll just tell them, like, they're orbs, and, like, they look like they're planets, and I know one of them is the sun. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the fuck the rest of them Well, are. hold on. You know two other ones. You know the planet that you're on, which is Toril. Um, looks like Earth, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Saloon, which is the moon. Uh, so you see the moon and the Earth, 
or Toral and Saloon, but the other ones you don't know what those planets are. There's three other ones. So yeah, just big ass interactive planetarium, basically. Okay, and do the things in there look like they're guarding it, or do they look like they're just there? I mean, they're just standing there, cat. It's not that big of a room. What do you expect them to be doing? Caretaking it, polishing it, doing some magical hoodads on the planets. So yeah, are we gonna open the door and kill these things or what? Glad kicks on the door. Uh, <laughs> make a strength athletics check. There it is. Boom. You kick the door in as hard as you can, and you think you do a pretty good job, but it's like it's welded shut. Oh! Okay, nope. You think with some help from others, you might be able to do it. You. I'm going to cast Mage Hand and have it try the door handle. That does not work. Uh, it's welded shut. Oh. I Eldritch Blast the door. You can only Eldritch Blast creatures. Oh, F. Well, then I just push the shit out of it with him. Um, okay. Glare just kind of sighs and steps back and just looks up at Xena kind of pleadingly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Big, tall, and angry. She can yeah, totally do I'll that. Yeah, I'll try to. Okay. Glare will assist her. So, yeah, Xena, you sort of get the top part of the door... <laughs> And the uh, other two of you are pushing along the bottom, and Relvin's mage hand is also pushing a little bit uh, as, uh, <laughs> with the, the five pounds of force that it gives. Um, and you all together manage to burst open this door um, as you work together here. And you see that um, uh, as you enter the guardians inside, and Zena, you'll have to shrink down to get in, by the way, a little bit. Okay. So would you do that? Okay. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. So yeah, um, you all enter, and you see that, sorry, I'm just putting people where I think they should go. Uh, okay, yeah, and as you enter, these um, three blue guys will telepathically speak to you all, and they will say, you are intruders to this place. Please leave promptly, or else we Absolutely will- Absolutely not. Execute lethal force. I draw my sword and I say that absolutely. Roll for initiative! Don't forget my satyr. Okay, so apparently if I do oh, this... Go get your satyr right oh, now. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. yeah. We're only willy really tonight. How long does the satyr last? An hour. Uh, oh, interesting. So yeah, 16, because I rolled a 12 and a 16. Okay. I don't know if that'll show up on the thing, though. Sitter is here. God damn it. I gotta say, like, the warlock paladin, like, crossover thing, like, this is really fucking cool. Like, I'm enjoying shows. Yeah, welcome to the fun part of multiclassing. It really sucks, though, when you want some of the abilities later on. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, like, I'm, I kind of am okay right now because I cast oh, everything no, at fucking fifth level anyway. <laughs> it's good to get a couple levels in something like that, just because. Alright, Claire, is your uh, roll 16 for realsies? It is 16. It is 16 and 12, and 16 apparently was the higher one, so it just shows that. All right, Jeff, you are up first, as you are the first to act. You drew your sword first, you're ready to go first. Uh, what Heck do you do? yeah, I'm within melee range of that guy right in front of me, aren't I? Go for it. Did you, did you hear me? Uh, sorry, what would you say, sir? Uh, one, the guy right here was from beside me, I'm in melee range of him. You are, sir. Okay. Uh... Well, then I'm gonna Eldritch Blast the one across the room. Okay, yeah, you see he's like behind one of like the big one. ass planets. Oh, uh, then I'll do this guy right here. Is that because he's in range? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, do that guy. Um, yeah. the first one just hits. As you, you fire, you slash your sword, and this crackling beam of golden energy flies and bursts right in front of Saturn, or, um, Xena's character, on this guy's armor. Yeah. So he does take some damage there. Cool. That's that's it for me. Okay. Uh, Mina's turn. She will 
um, fire off a bolt of lightning at the creature that you just hit, Jeff. Well, not like lightning bolt, but you know her. Yeah. Hand trip. Warp thing. Yeah. <laughs> or ball of lightning will strike him right in the chest. In the chest. <laughs> And you watch his electricity is like coursing through him, and uh, that's it for her. She will hide be underneath Xena. She'll like hide behind her leg, um, glare her up. All right, let us move. Uh, I kind of want to stick close to. No, Jeff has pretty good armor. Uh, I will move there, and I am going to use lightning lure. DC seventeen save. Okay. The guy over there. Oh, the dude over there? Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he fails. So what happens to him? So, uh, target gets pulled up to 10 feet towards me. If he ends his turn beside me, he takes 2d8 lightning damage. Okay, yeah, so you just Which get over here. Well, you, with this lightning whip thing, grapple, reaches out and grabs him, yanks his ass over. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, damage. I've been looking forward to doing that. Uh, it's nine damage. And that'll be my turn. Uh, what was that? It, 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 it was nine damage at two and a seven. Oh, why didn't it roll? What the hell? It did. It rolled automatically for some reason. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay, so nine points of damage? Yep. All right. He's electrocuted as he is yanked towards you. Huh. Okay. Is that it? That's my turn. Alright, Xena, you're up. Okay, I am going to try to hit the same one, Glarus. Okay. Uh, she won't you can. She can reach over him. She oh. has reach. She still has reach. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't. Alright, you don't have reach. But she can move around. Oh, well, then I can... Can, like, hit a know. different one. I'll just hit a different one. You just step over. Yeah, monkey. go for it. You can get around him. Yeah, you find a way. <laughs> What's the correct roll for small? Um, it is the. Is it this one? The top one, the uh, just the main one under your actions. The unarmed is that strike. Right? Let's see. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, you punch the the, the one straight square in the jaw. Your hand larger than his whole head. Uh, he's looking very hurt as he's bleeding this blue blood from his bald head. Okay. Yeah, get him again. Oh my god. <laughs> and she crits. <laughs> You're very lucky. <laughs> she has the feet, and she's actually lucky. <laughs> Can you send some of that my way? <laughs> Alright, go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, it's an extra... Extra d6 dice on this one. Because it's a crit. Oh, because she's got brutal. Uh, yeah, you, you, this time, you just snap his neck. And he dies completely on the ground. He did. All right. <laughs> He'd be dead. You have another attack. I guess I'll attack the other one. Okay, you go this time. You take your large leg and you just try to do a low kick. Low kick to you is a high kick to him. Uh, and let's see. Does that hit his armor? I think they just have 16. Yeah, that just hits. So boom, you crunch through his armor, 11 points of damage. He is now looking bloody, the one to your right glare, as uh, Xena kicks him with massive force. He almost, like, lurches into you <laughs> as he's moved a little bit. Um, all right, that's it for your turn, Xena, unless you're using Flurry. That's it. That's it? Okay. Uh, all right, now these guys turn. They're going to attack... Uh, well, one of them is going to go for Jeff, and then the other one is going to go for um, Glare with uh, their great swords. So these guys are more armored, and they're carrying these great swords. Okay. 
I'm ready. Whenever you roll the attack roll for the one that attacks me, I have something. Okay. So, the one that... One of them rolls a 20 on you, Glare. Natural 20? No, just a 20. Okay, yeah, that still goes through my arm. Okay, God so damn. you take 11 points of slashing <laughs> as he uh, cuts through you with the greatsword. With his second swing on the back swing, he tries to hit you again, but you put your shield up <laughs> to block that one. Uh, um, currently bloodied. Okay. Uh, Jeff, one of them does connect with you. As a reaction, yeah. my sword casts fire shield upon me, and you see as I get engulfed in this like kind of like a fiery uh, aura around me and everything that kind of coalesces onto the places where that used to be like the frost armor that I used to have, and it kind of is more of like just kind of like this um, like this ethereal like fire armor just engulfing me now. Hell yeah. Alright, so you, you guys watch as Jeff is covered in this uh, fire shield, and as he's got these sort of flames sort of licking off his skin, forming this armor around him, uh, you notice that it is it is actually radiating a bit of light out. Um, and I will make that a thing here right now. Right, 10 feet of, like, orange light. So there's, so, <laughs> Jeff is emanating this bright light. Uh, and he's going to take how much fire damage? Is it 2d8? Okay. So roll 2d8. Go ahead and roll 2d8 for me, uh, Jeff. And you take 8 points of slashing damage uh, from that great sword. The other one you managed to duck underneath that second slash. And he takes 7 points of fire damage from the uh, from the fire shield. I don't think he has resistance. No, he doesn't. You said, you said I take 8, right? Correct. 8 points of slashing. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's it for their turns. Relvin, you're up. Okay, which one's looking worse? The one near Glare and Xena. Okay, I'm gonna produce flame that one. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack roll. Oh. Yeah, missed. You hit one of the planets. <laughs> the blue planet nearby. It sort of okay. scatters off of it. Well, I guess there goes the dinosaurs. Yep. That's how they all died. In the background, you hear this like, Everybody do the dinosaurs. <laughs> okay, what the hell I, was that? I can command my uh, satyr to face step there. Bloop. This appears in a flurry of autumn leaves as it wields its giant quarterstaff. Boom! Go ahead and make an attack roll. I'm gonna try to crack it upside the head with its... Quarterstaff. That hits. Bundle damage. All right, 17 points of damage as you slam as the satyr slams into it the back of its head. You watch this blue blood sort of pops out of its mouth. Uh, but it's um, they don't show any expression, even though they're being slaughtered right now. They're still fighting as if almost robotic, mindless fighting. Um, Back again. Yeah, go for it. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. <laughs> Slam into it again. Same spot right in the head. Uh, he was looking very bloody now. His blue blood is sort of pouring all down his face and through his helmet. Um, alright. Is that it for your turn? That's it for my turn. Jeff, you're up. Um. I'm gonna cast Green Flame Blade and attack the creature in front of me. Okay. Your sword, your golden sword lights up with green flames that the gem powers it. The gem lights up with this green color and lights the whole thing up with this green flame. I'm gonna make an attack roll. Oh fuck, I gotta do hold on. Yeah, that's okay, five extra for Yeah. Alright, yeah, that hits. So he is Oh, just barely. He's <laughs> he's looking very, very hurt, like he's barely hanging on as you stick your blade deep in his side and the flames sort of burn his whole abdomen. Uh, but he's just hanging on at his hanging on his greatsword there. 
after that, I just chuckle at him and I say, hit me again, I dare you. Huh. Okay. Uh, right hit him again, I dare you. <laughs> Mina's gonna fire a another lightning ball at the one trying to attack uh, Glare and Xena. She totally plays favorites, by the way. Yeah, she does. Uh, and so it takes 12 points of lightning damage. As he's struck with another one of these electrified balls, and he's also looking very, very hurt uh, at this point. And Glare, it is your turn. Alright, well, uh, I guess I'll just take a swing at it with Fragorak! Go for it. Fragorak time! Motherfuck! <laughs> uh, you just, you, you try to hit him, but you come up against that armor that it's wearing. I do it again! That hits this time. So this time you hammer it again. <laughs> Softened it up, uh, and you kill him. As you just burst through and cave in his chest with Fragorak. Yeah, that's what you get. Right. Oh, that one left. You okay with your cat? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, okay. Get some exercise, I'm good. Alright, there's one left, and Xena, <laughs> Xena, you're up. It's like trickling down his cheek. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um. I'll try to hit it. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Uh, that first one misses, unfortunately, as you, you punch him, but he's wearing a lot of armor. That one hits. This time you just stomp on him. And, uh, yep, he, you just sort of see as he's Alive? just crushed on the ground. No, he's dead. Oh. He's dead. That's it. Go. Yeah. Okay. The room goes quiet as you've dealt with the guardians of the Tower of Divination here. So, um, you all see that there are some engraved words in Draconic. And uh, Mina will go ahead and start preparing her um, sort while of comprehend languages. Does, while she does that, I'll prepare to detect magic too. Okay. Yeah. So, what else would you all like to do while those two are casting their spells? You see sort of like, that you see all these celestial bodies all around um, of different planets and whatnot. And you also see out of your peripheral vision stars overhead that are sort of dancing about. I want to see how they compare to the normal constellations that I've seen in Icewind Dale. Okay. Yeah, as you look up into the stars while those two are doing their spells, your vantage room, your vantage point of the room suddenly shifts, uh, Relbin. And all of a sudden you get these visions in your head, and you see a dozen Nothics bursting into the room that you're in right now and catching all of your allies unprepared. Um, but after a brief moment, you're back where you're standing, and you feel all of your sentence, uh, um, senses have been briefly heightened. Wow, that was... What was that about? Um, uh... And based on... Uh, you know, based on your wisdom and you trying to put all this together, you would venture that within a few seconds from now... Those enemies are going to burst through this noob, and you, and you know that it's going to happen. Like, you feel it in your body that these creatures are going to come bursting in any second. Now. How many did I see again? A dozen? Uh, yeah, you saw about a dozen coming in. We've got incoming. We got what? I just had a vision. A dozen, about a dozen Nothics are coming. Also, you feel that like after you looked up at the at the sky as the ceiling, Relbin, that you you have like you have this sort of premonition sense that is like making you feel like you're more powerful than normal, like you're able to see a little bit into the future. Uh, well, Glare where are they coming to, from? Glare's gonna stop the uh, his stop trying to cast detect magic and pull a Fragorak. Okay, and where do you guys want to place yourselves? He saw them coming through the front door. Is so, there any other way out? You you only have a couple seconds. I'm just sort of saying, where do you want to go um, to place? I'm gonna yourself tell everybody to back away from the door a little bit, okay. and I'm gonna say I've got something for them. Okay, and Glare, I just can't plant growth on the door. Yeah, you can. Yeah. 
Okay, that changes what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to cast Wall of Light over the top of the door. Okay. I guess I'll prepare Lightning Lure for the first thing that gets in range of me. Okay, everyone go ahead and roll initiative. And I'm going to put a uh, big-ass plant growth. You can actually have it go out the door, Saturn, all the way out. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Did you did you hear mine too, Perry? Uh, what are you going to say? Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm wall. dropping a wall of light right on top of the door and stretching out into the hallway or the, down the steps out there. Okay. We'll do that in the initiative order. Okay. As soon as we see where these guys are. Let's say that's like a readied action. I'm just... Alright. Yeah. So. Oh my god, I didn't think about that. Wall of light and plank wrote together. Jesus fucking Christ. I was gonna cast Firebolt, but I'm changing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got all these cool ass little, little tools I, and I'm just I'm using no, them all. I am I'm excited because I didn't I've like not seen you do any of this stuff, so this is great. I know, it's all cool. new. I love it. <laughs> Glare is getting caught completely off guard because most what? of his stuff he, he kinda tries to plan a little bit ahead and he is not expecting any of this shit. <laughs> what does Wall of Light do? <laughs> Oh. Oh, buddy. Yeah. All right. Serving wall of bright light appears at a point you choose within range. I can do it horizontally, vertically, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. And I'm also going to make it 30 feet, Perry. Just so it's not like... 30 feet? Insanely huge. Yeah. Sure. Like, kind of like five feet into the room. And then, like, the rest of it out in front. Okay. Basically, constitution saving throw for anything that's walks through it or is in it and everything. And they take 48 on a fail or half that. Um, if they don't, they're also blinded if they fail. Um, and then if they start a turn in it, they automatically take 48 radiant. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well then. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking badass. Fifth level spell, buddy. Sorry, I'm yeah, just I trying I wish I had some of those. Alright. So you guys watch as uh, Xeno's tattoos fade. <laughs> and this giant... Uh, plant growth, mushrooms begin sprouting up <laughs> all the outside and covering the whole floor all around the outside, the front of this tower and just through the doorway and then Jeff puts up a gigantic wall of light <laughs> blind, almost blindingly so, blocking the entrance of this door, and you guys are just ready to go as these creatures are coming uh, slowly towards you all so plant growth is uh, four feet for every one foot that they can go, right? Saturn? Try to go back to it and see. I think it is. Um, but let me just look at the initiative order. Did I roll for Mina? Uh, sorry, I forgot to roll initiative. There you go. I always forget for Mina as well, so don't worry. Alright, so here we go. Alright, this first guy is going to try to come in, and what does Wall of Light mean he has to do? If he started the turn in it, he just takes 48. 48. Go ahead and roll 48. Uh, does he make a save for that or anything? Um, only like, so the way that it reads, um, if, uh, it, it says when it appears, each creature in its area must make a constitution saving throw. So yeah, constitution. we say that they ran into it or that I cast it on top of them. I'll say you cast it right on top of them. So you just okay. So yeah, they got to make a constitution saving throw. It's DC 19. Okay. And if they fail, they take 48 and they're blinded. Okay. Fail. Go ahead and roll 48. I'm gonna actually have them all do this because they're all in it right now. And then they take the blind status too, which I don't. Is the blind status just disadvantage on melee attacks? Also, uh, Relbin, if you want, go ahead and look up the benefits of the foresight spell because you have that for one turn. Damn. Foresight? Yeah. One turn. Ooh. Oh. Okay. I recall it's a level 9 spell. Alright, they all take 10 points of light damage and are blinded. <laughs> Did you I hear them? Bad for the ones that are going to have to like make their next turn in it because they're just going to get fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Luckily they're going in a straight line so they're not... But the plant growth is going to hinder them. Okay. So, this first one is going to use a bit of movement. That's, uh, that's within range of 20. Lure. That's 20 within feet. It. Yeah. So, you, you watch him walk out, Glare, and your lightning lure activates. You sort of whip him out. <laughs> Go ahead and make it. It's a strength save, right? Uh, strength 17. Yeah, you pull him. So, you pull him right to you as he comes out, barely making it through these mushrooms. Yeah. 14 points of lightning damage. 
uh, as this Nopic begins to bleed uh, out of its uh, green eyes, green blood. She's got... It's like some Dota Tower defense bullshit right here. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah. You just wait till my turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, that For his turn, then, he's going to try to attack you, Glare, since you yeah, just I yanked his ass. But he is... Blind? Is he only blind while he's in it, uh, Tech, or is it... Uh, it just says blinded for one minute, or he can make a constitution save At the throw. end of his turn. Right, to, okay. to get out of it. But he has disadvantage on these strikes on you as he's swinging blindly, and you're just, like, easily, like, just, like, backing away uh, as he's unable to find any purchase with his blinded stealth here. Um, and he's going to make constitution saving throw to see if he can not be blinded. Just try to shake it off. Yeah, and he does. He shakes it off. Uh, let me mark these other guys as blinded. Um, what symbol do I want to use? Oh, I'll just do this one. Good symbol. I don't know. Looks like a ninja, but whatever. Sure, okay. why not? Whatever. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's his turn. The stalker is up next. Uh, and its movement speed is... Uh, 30 feet, so it can only go like bases. Okay, so it just goes there and it's still in the wall of light as it's fighting its way through this plant growth. Mm, but it can't really do anything. So roll another 48 for me. Well, it says on the beginning of its next turn, but. Oh, well, this is. Well, okay, I see. Okay, that's yeah, fine. Like We're... like he did the Constitution saving so initially, so he's not going to take the damage till his Got it. Neck, at the end of his next turn. Yeah, thank you. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Glare, you're up. Uh, well, I'm going to ignore the thing in front of me for a second, and uh, I'm going to cast, as a level one spell, Grease. Yay! Right there, please. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, and that's a, is it a ten foot? What is it again? It is a ten by ten square. Ten by ten square, so yeah. we'll say you do it like this, basically. Roughly? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so oh, they need to make uh, deck saves now. They need to make deck, deck saves now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is a disaster for them. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking have weren't I, ready. Have I told you how much I like the spell Grease, by the way, Perry? <laughs> so they all fall on their ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so now they're burning in a wall of light under mushrooms and they're covered in grease. <laughs> and you just hear screaming. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like burning up. Oh my god, welcome to the D&D meat grinder, guys. Oh, I almost feel a little bit bad about that one. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what they're gonna bad. do at this point. Uh, this one is gonna tr use half its movement to get up on its feet, and it's gonna only be able to move one square through the plant growth. <laughs> uh, Mina is just gonna move up, and she's gonna put go through the oh, wall of yeah. light. Uh, Perry did it. It ended its turn in the uh, grease. It has to make another deck save. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, let me make another deck save for it. No, it ended its turn after it got up and moved. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one. Eighteen. That beats it. Okay, so it's just managing to stay up. Uh, Mina is gonna go up to him and she's a bit. Well, that's a up, and she's gonna fire a lightning bolt. <laughs> 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 this giant thing, and you watch as it sort of parts the light a little bit. <laughs> as this lightning bolt just ejects from her fingertip and just strikes all these guys. Jesus Christ! Uh, more deck saving throws for them in their future. Fail. I don't think any of them can succeed against this, unless they get really lucky. Fail. One more. Fail. Alright, so they take, um, 8d6. Thirty-three points of lightning damage! <laughs> Old cow. Yeah, that's a high roll on that. So... Yeah, you, you smell like burnt flesh. <laughs> uh, and uh, you think, uh, you're not sure if they're alive or not after that. <laughs> but you hear screaming. So a few of them must <laughs> still be alive, at least. And she'll be like, well, they're sturdier than I thought. And she'll just sort of move away. 
Yeah, the other ones weren't this sturdy, were they? So I'm like, I'm just like scrolling up, like beside her and everything. I'm just like, hmm, good shot. And well, I'm gonna stand where she was, and I'm just gonna Eldritch Blast in the direction of whatever the fuck. Okay. Go for it. Do I make attack roll? Yeah. Uh, a few of them are on the ground, so these have disadvantage, but that one still hits. Uh, so go ahead and roll two more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still, oh, still hits. Still hits. Yeah. So wasted crit F. Yeah, you made it. You you sort of slash your blade, and you hear two of the noises of them burning alive sort of stop. As two of them are dead, and you see a wall of light, like it's hard to see into this thing. So it probably would have been disadvantage anyway, just trying to hit them. Right. <laughs> F. All right, Zena, it's your turn. Can I throw I... cookies at them. Yeah, uh, I actually pulled one up right beside you. She, I'll, I'll still, yeah, you know, I'll still let her throw cookies. Fine. Uh, yeah, go. <laughs> you throw a cookie down at, at the one near you, uh, but it misses, unfortunately. <laughs> many can I do? Uh, you can do two cookies and then you can punch it. I'm not near it, am I? There's one, I pulled one up beside us both. Oh, okay. Yeah, unfortunately the second one misses as well, as you're unable to hit it with the cookies, you're like a bit too big and you're not used to it, you're like, damn it! Um... They hit the other one. Oh, no, that misses as well. So you, uh, you try to punch it, but you find no purchase of ducks underneath uh, your fist there. Uh, it's blind. Wouldn't she have advantage, by the way? Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, did it rank blindness? Uh, let that me... Let me... Yeah, it, it, uh... Oh, no, it did save against the blind. Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah it did save that, against okay. the blindness, sorry. Yeah, so still a miss. Alright. Um, is that it for your turn, Xena? Yeah. Okay. Relbin, you're up. Okay. I'm gonna move. Oh. Before you do anything else, make a wisdom check for me, real quick. Wisdom, wisdom check or save? Just a normal wisdom insight. Do wisdom insight. Wisdom insight. Yeah. Yeah. You think that um, sort of thinking about like what just happened with the foresight. You think that anyone could just look up and gain these benefits. That you have, but yeah. So yeah, now it's your turn. You have foresight active, uh, so whatever that means. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Can I see the? Can I see this one? Um, make a perception check with uh, disadvantage. It's really hard uh, to see. And I get advantage because foresight. Yes. So, so it cancels out. Yep. No, it's really hard to see through that wall of light. It is bright as hell. Okay. You can try to throw it there at disadvantage, since you know technically where it is, if you want to throw yeah. or produce flame. Yeah, I'm going to throw produce flame there. Uh, it it's says it's... technically you'd have advantage with foresight, so you actually... Straight just roll. So it's a straight yeah. roll, yeah. So, like, you're using your intuition on knowing, seeing the vision before and where it was, but unfortunately, uh... With that roll, that misses as you sort of hurl the flame, and it just sort of strikes the pavement nearby. Uh, the mushroom, actually, one of the mushrooms lights on fire. Okay, I on. use the rest of my movement to move back here. Okay. I command my uh, satyr to face up there. Okay. And attack the one that's right here. Hold on one sec. I think there's something going on. Why can I not grab that satyr? There it goes. Right here? No. Here. What the? Ugh. So weird to grab this thing. Okay. Alright, go for it. Eighteen? That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. As your satyr sort of disappears in a flurry of autumn leaves and reappears right in front of the Nothic goes to crush its skull. 14? Uh, 14 points of damage. Oof! Yeah, uh, you watch as, like, uh, green blood begins to pour from the creature's eyeball. 
And it's looking bloodied at this point. Very hurt. Let's do it again. Go for it. Uh, yeah, that hits. Unroll damage. Another 12. Okay. Yeah, that hits. And it's dead. Alright. At this point, reinforcements arrive. For the enemies. But they have to trudge through all this bullshit. Bill. Okay, uh, I have a question. Here. Yeah? So... The way that uh, Wall of Light reads, it says, it basically at the very end of it just says, a creature that ends its turn in the walls area takes 48 radiant damage. Yeah. So I guess it is like Grease, and it's just if they end their turn, even if it is oh, yeah. the first one. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly how it goes. Okay. Well, Jesus. Oh, peace fuck. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and make these guys visible. Oh shoot, these guys have the same HP. Uh, well, that's gonna be annoying. Hold on, one moment while I fix this light problem. Um, okay. Alright, I am just fixing their HP bars because they're all like tied together for some reason. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that they all get their just justice for their HP bars. Alright. Okay, more of them appear this round, and they all need to make Constitution saving throws. Mm -hmm. And Dex, if they entered degrees, yes. as soon as you enter it or end your turn. A lot of rolling here today. First one is a success, actually, for once in his life. So go ahead and roll 48 for me, Tech, again. Only one success so far. Oh, shoot. Oof, low damage. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. These things have... True Sight. Hold on. It's true Sight. Is that the same as Blind Sight? Hold on. Hold on, please. Holding on. I gotta remember... what this means. True sight. You're seeing. Blah, 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 blah. Just see for the future. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I'll say it can still be blinded, because it doesn't say anything about it not being able to be blinded, even though it has true sight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... So two of them fail, and two of them succeed on the blindness uh, thing. So two of them take half damage. This one takes only half damage. Five points of damage. The other ones take the full 11 points of damage from the Wall of Light. And this one takes 11 points of damage. This one also takes only five points of damage. Okay. okay. And the other two are blind. I'll put the blind thing on them. Sorry, it's just a lot. Okay. There we go. I mean, to be fair, we did it to you. Yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. And then this one needs to make a dexterity saving throw because it's on the grease. Hey, oh. So he falls to the ground. Okay. And he is considered prone. He's going to use half his movement to get up. And he's going to move forward, but that's as far as he can go through the plant growth. And then he takes another 48. Yep. 
So he's gonna make another 48, take another 48. I'm just gonna use the same roll. Oof. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, he's looking very, he's looking, um, no, not bloodied yet. All right, now it's this creature's turn. It's going to use half its movement to get up and it can move one space and it's still in the grease, so it has to make another deck save, which it succeeds, so he's still, he's still there. And it needs to make another con save for the Wall of Light. I'm going to use the same damage roll. <laughs> Five points of damage. He's not blinded. Okay. Oof. Glare, you're up. You haven't yes. seen any come through yet, the wall. You just hear screaming and burning and slipping and falling and all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, it sounds good. Uh, I'm going to move here, and I'm going to ready an action to hit the first thing that tries to go through with Ragorak. Okay. Actually, I can reach that one, can I, through the door? Can I see it? Um, no. Well, make a perception check with disadvantage. I'll move to that side so that's it's, uh, Zena can get it if she wants to hit things. Uh, perception with disadvantage. Where's perception? Where's perception? Uh, yeah, you see it. You see it, but you're still gonna have have disadvantage trying to swing at it. But you you do see it. I'll still swing at it. Go for it. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Damn it! <laughs> Nine points of damage. You smack it. Uh, it is looking bloodied at this point. Try again. Yep. That hits. Go ahead and hit it again. Attack roll. Twelve. <laughs> just smashing into this thing through the wall of light. Bow, bow. Beating it in as it's. Uh, you can't see what it looks like, but it, it, you hear screams from inside the wall. Ragrak almost seems to kind of know where to hit and just kind of moves slightly as I'm swinging it. <laughs> um. Uh. Does Mina even want to use more lightning bolts? I mean, it seems like you guys have this under control. So she's just going to use her chain lightning, and to, or not chain lightning, her um, lightning ball. Disadvantage for her. Oh, it ruined a crit. Uh, yeah, but, it ruined a crit too, don't worry. Yeah, but it kills that first one. <laughs> As the lightning sort of fries it. All right, Jeff, you're up. Uh, I'm just going to kind of step back a couple of steps and just Eldritch Blast. Okay. Go for it. I'm just taking pop shots while I let my freaking walls kill everything. Oh, yeah. This is peak D&D &D problem solving here. So, yeah, the first one hits. <laughs> Ten points of damage. And the second one also hits for 15 points of damage. Woo. Well, 16 at the death. Second one was eight, or did you just want to take the first on each one? Uh, the first of each one for damage and then okay. the two attack rolls. Okay, so yeah, you fire off these two golden beams and it's almost dead. All right, uh, Xena, you're up, but you don't see anything, but you can throw cookies down the hallway as your plant growth is slowing them down, even with the sight. Uh, this is this isn't darkness. It's just bright light in your face. I think she's talking about the uh, the prep, the clairvoyance thing. The or sight. Oh no, never mind. No, the other thing. The devil sight. Yeah. Oh right. You can throw I cookies. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah, that hits even with the disadvantage. Two twenties. So you throw a cookie. You hit it right in the eyeball, and you hear a squish, and it dies. Yep, exactly. So, uh, for the record, uh, if if uh, Jeff and Xena were characters in a gotcha game, they'd probably be five stars for this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the second the SSG broken... for tower defense. The, the... Broken combo. Broken combo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The the second cookie just sort of slams into the next one's face, <laughs> and you hear it as it's struck by it. All right, that's it. For Xena's turn, Robin, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna move here. Yep. Produce flame down the hallway. Good. Disadvantage. Actually, I'm gonna look up first. Okay. 
You use your bonus action to look up, and you gain the benefits of foresight again for this turn. Yeah. Uh, do I not? I'm gonna whisper to everyone in Alvin. Look up before you attack. There you go. Really replies back at Elvin. These things can speak Elvin, you know. Huh. Anyway, make an attack roll with normal, straight. Yeah. And as you look up, you sort of you sort of see where they are. You visualize like where they are on the ground, like ahead of you, and you see more coming. There. Yeah. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that uh, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, 11 points of fire damage. Just scorch that one. You hear screaming as its flesh is being burned away. All right, top of the round. More reinforcements. I, uh. Okay. Can I have my uh, my uh, summon action prepared action? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have it move down here. Mm-hmm. Like, uh... And I gonna... Right here? Yep. And tell it to hit the first Nothic it sees. Okay. Alright, so this thing... Let me see what this thing's abilities are. Uh, one sec. This one is special Nothic, so I have to... Ooh... Ooh. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. So. I don't like the way he's saying that. Yeah, me neither. Okay, so, okay, okay. So these guys all need to roll initiative. What happened to this guy? He left the initiative order for some reason. Um, I'm just gonna roll... for this... these two guys. Sorry, because of that, like, earlier bug that I had, I have to now roll their initiative, like, manually. So, uh, I mean, I'm gonna... I'm not gonna accuse you of cheating, Perry, so I don't think you need to explain it to us. Yeah, sorry. Okay, we're gonna do Stalker 1. And Stalker, too. Well, I'll just do Stalkers on the same initiative count so I don't get more confused than I already am. Okay. And then this guy also needs to roll initiative. The big chonky boy. Okay. Now let's sort this again. Top of the round. Uh... This guy is going to take 11 points of damage. Well, he's going to make a constitution saving throw. To see if he gets out of this shit. Nope, he fails, so he takes another 11 points of damage from the radiant damage. And he uses half his movement to get up, moves forward, then has to make a dex save to get out of the grease. Uh, and he falls again. So he's on his ass again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this, these two are going to move forward. One, he steps into the grease, so he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Fail, so he falls. Alright, and then he has to use half his movement to get up. And he can only take one more space up. And then he has to make another dex save to see if he falls again. And he falls again. Okay, so they're falling all over themselves as they're trying to make their way through here. And he needs to make level... a con save. <laughs> a level one spell, by the way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why is this not working? Okay, here we go. Uh, success on that con save. So he at least gets half damage from that. Alright. Blair, it is your turn. I... Yes, I'm gonna ready in action because I can't reach anything right now. Okay. So I mean, I, I it doesn't say anything my... about a con save, by the way. If, if they end their turn, they take full damage. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Well, that was their first turn in it, these two in particular. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, I will. There are reinforcements. I will just, I'll just ready anything that comes. Actually, I'll take my bonus action to look up and see what the hell Relvin was talking about first. Okay, you gain the benefits of the foresight spell for one turn, one round. So you. Wow, I can't believe I. I can't believe I can see anything. Like, as, whoa, whoa. As you whoa. you sort of see like a premonition of all the creatures that are coming in at you. You see two Nothic that look different from the other ones, almost like lankier and larger, and then you see another one, a big one with a giant blue eye uh, coming towards you as well. I ready Fragorak and get ready to swing when I think they're going to actually come through the door based on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's it for your turn. This guy is going to hold his turn, and I need to roll a d20. I don't like the sound of that. I do. Okay. Oh, I know what happened. Do you? Yeah. Don't tell me. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm, you, will, you will be. Alright, Mina's turn. She will try to fire another one of her signature lightning balls at the creature. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, you hear another one scream out as it burns up. Alright, I'm gonna put these other guys in line here. <laughs> They're all getting in line. Alright, Xena, you're up. You don't see any yet, but you can keep throwing cookies if you'd like. Okay, I will. Zena's <laughs> just like chucking cookies. Oh, uh, one of them, that one misses, unfortunately. Uh, Relvin also said to look up, by the way. Oh yeah, do you take Relvin's advice and look up at the stars? Yeah. Okay. As you look up, Zena, you you look up at the the dancing stars and you see exactly where those creatures are. And in your premonition, you watched as this large Nothic with a big blue eye sort of disappeared. And the other ones are sort of burning in a bright light with grease and mushrooms surrounding them. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but the two cookies hit now, uh, since you did that. So go ahead and roll damage for both cookies. Alright. Seven, 16 points of damage as the enormous cookies are battering... Uh, the enemies that are stuck in this terrible trap that you all have created. All right. Should I say that I've seen the, that first Nothic that's right here at all? Uh, no. Too bright. Okay. It hasn't stepped out yet of the okay. wall of light. Uh, okay. Um. Come on, stop moving. All right. I'm gonna try to that up here, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay, Jeff, it's your turn. Um, I guess I'm just going to take another step back and just build your last skill. Okay. Disadvantage. Alright, the first one misses. Second one hits, though. 15 points of force damage as you hear a screech. <laughs> from the, the hall there. No. Oh. Um, Alright, this guy is... This is his first turn in the Wall of Light, so he gets one con save here. Uh, fail. So he takes 11 points of damage. Um, and he's gonna try to move forward, but he ends up in the grease, so that's a constitution save, or a dexterity save. Oh, he's also blind, by the way. So I need to add the blind thing. Uh, and he falls. So he is in the grease and he fell half his movement to get up move forward has to make another deck save fail again falls on his ass again so they're all falling all over each other uh and Robin you're up you step over here look up bonus action look up yep step over here and fire my fire do it straight roll that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Eight points of fire damage as you hear more <laughs> screaming and flesh burning on the other side. Okay. This almost feels mean. 
I'm gonna step back. Okay. And have my setter. I'm gonna have my setter move here with the, with the same way action. Okay. Okay. Alright, now it's time for these guys. Also, their first turns in the thing. Or actually, it's this one's first turn in the thing. Uh. Oh, hey, it actually fucking succeeded for once in its life. So, five points of damage to him. And he's going to try to move forward. Needs to make a deck save as he tries to step over his fallen comrade. Oh, he succeeds on the deck save. Oh, he gets to go one more space and he's out of most of the bullshit. Okay. Hey, look, at, look at him. He's, he's doing good. Uh, oh, it's going places in life. Yeah, the other, the, the other one just sort of burns up in the wall of light. <laughs> It's dead. Um, and then the stalker's turns. This one takes 11 points for being in the wall of light. You can use half its movement to stand up and move forward out of the grease. Uh, and that's all it can move. And the second one is going to go... Is that ever getting in range of my hammer? <laughs> no, they're still having trouble even freaking getting through all this BS. So, deck save to see if he can... Nope, he falls on his ass. And then that's it for his movement. So he's on his ass. Okay. Glare, you're up. As you see, Glare just kind of swing at the air. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I guess I'll look up as a bonus action again. Yep. And just say, ah, oh, the hell with it. Firebolt. Okay, go for it. Disadvantage. But you have a normal roll now. Hey! <laughs> as a little, as he holds up his wrist, a little rocket comes out and fires. Yes, you guys watch as a rocket flies out of uh, one of the compartments of uh, Glare's arm and explodes ahead. And you hear a sound as it. Ha! Got one that time. Okay, uh, but don't celebrate too much yet as a gigantic hulking figure appears behind you. This is a super Nothic. Oh. Yeah, the first one to actually make it through all this crap. And he looks kind of like this. Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. And it is going to do... I need everyone... Hold on. Yeah, everyone, including the satyr, to make wisdom saving throws for me. So, fun fact, as this site also gives you advantage on saving throws. Yeah, as you watch, as its, as its blue eye begins to, like, glow, and you guys are like, your brain is, like, starting to hurt as you, as you stare into this eye. Probably won't be good. Hey! Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's a success for Jeff. Success for Relbin. Fail on Glare. Mm -hmm. uh, Xena, can you make one as well? And can you have the uh, Seder make one for me as well? I was just going to bet Wisdom mod. Okay. Actually, does it have proficiency in that? Uh, Mina needs to make yeah. one as well. Really wish I had Flash as a genius. Oh, right Mina now. got that point. Okay. Uh... That's probably not good for poor Glare. Okay. Um, so, Glare, you take 14 points of psychic damage. Uh, the ones who save take half that, so 7 points of psychic damage. And... That's all you know. Okay. Can you mark down the satyr to... By 14, it, its max health was... 48. 48? Okay. 48 was its max health. Okay. So, 48. Okay. So it takes um, 14 points of damage, so that's 34. Good left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and it's going to make two claw attacks. But misses, Glare. It's <laughs> trying to rake um, against you. Yeah. That's it for its turn. Mina is going to shoot a ball lightning at it. 
Um, actually, she's going to take the attack of opportunity and just move back. Uh, I'll give it disadvantage. Okay. Um, it's going to try to claw her. Um, oh, wait, she wasn't within five feet of me, was she? She was, like, no. behind him? Yeah, I don't think I could reach her then. Okay, so it tries to slash at her, but you watch as these constellations sort of appear in front of her. <laughs> It sort of block its hit, and she just sort of casually walks away. Whatever. That is so bullshit. <laughs> um. Cool. Um, and yeah, it takes how much damage? Oh, only wow, that's a really low roll for her. Okay, four points of lightning damage for the creature, and Xena, you're up. So you watch as this giant thing appeared behind Glare. Oh, wait, at the end of its turn, after all d20. Sorry, before you go, Xena. I don't like this thing. Okay, it's still there. Xena, now it's your turn. Okay, um, can I get bigger? Uh, yeah. Not in here. Yeah, you can. It's like a 30 foot ceiling. <laughs> So Jeff, you sort of get pushed aside a little bit as Xena's leg just sort of pushes you aside as she grows in size. You're like, whoa! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Was that a bonus action? Uh, or, for you I can't to, remember which one is which. Yeah, yeah. For you to get bigger, it's free, but to shrink, oh, okay. it's an action. It's because you just sort and of slam your gauntlets together. I will try to hit the thing behind the layer. Okay, go for it. You try to stomp on this guy that's trying to hit Glare. Uh, what is this thing? To see, uh, premonition, right? Oh yeah, she does. She, um, yeah, she does have advantage. So, yeah, you manage to like sort of see into the future, see where he's gonna dodge, and you step slightly to the side. <laughs> Stomp on him for whatever much how much damage you roll here. Nineteen points of bludgeoning damage. Can I also try to spin a key to do a sudden strike? Yes, you can. All right, you 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 step on him, but he manages to just hold uh hold his um he's not stunned. He manages just like flex his muscles. And... Yep. That hits. One roll damage. I'm gonna try to spend a key to stun him again. Okay. This one, this time he fails. So he is now stunned. As this time you, you uh, kick him really hard in the side, and you watch as he tenses up and freezes. Um, I'm gonna spend a key to do flurry of blows. Go for it. You have advantage on these. Yep. That hits. So, hold on, so 15, uh, and then 17, and then 15 and 10. Alright, he's looking very, very hurt as Xena is just pummeling him and just like, crushing him with <clears throat> just beating him into, into the ground with her punches. Um, he's not bloodied yet, but he's looking hurt. Um, that's it for Xena's turn. Jeff, you're up. He's stunned. Uh, just walk around and eligible blast him. Okay, <laughs> you have advantage because he's stunned. Um, yeah, though both of the, yeah, uh, so nine and eleven, so twenty points of damage total. Uh, as you just fire two golden jets of force energy, <laughs> striking him in the back. Uh, that's it for his turn. All right, now time for me to play uh, roll the dice with Perry Pennington here. <laughs> okay, so he's gonna use half his movement to get up, get out of the grease. He takes 11 points of damage for being in the wall, and he is going to move one more space up. Okay, and that's it for his turn. Thank God, no more grease for him. Uh, Relbin, you're up. Was my standard able to see him just poking out in the wall, or no? Not yet. He's still technically in the wall. 
Okay. But you can make an attack roll at disadvantage. Mm. No, so I'm gonna move here. Uh huh. I'm gonna. You know, no reason not to look up as a bonus action. Not that and you know. I, well, saving throws just in case. Yeah. And I'm gonna fire, produce f flame on the, uh, the blue-eyed one. So you're not looking at, at it, or you are, up above. Look, I did look up above. Okay, okay, yeah. So you have advantage anyway because he's stunned, but yeah. Yeah. All right. I gotta roll again. Let's see if you crit. Nope, nope, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, nine points of fire damage as you throw it right in this thing's face. This burst of golden flame covering his face. Burning okay, up his I'm going to have my uh, Stutter teleport to here. Okay. And I'm going to have it attack. Go for it. One. Okay, attack roll with advantage. Stuck. Both of them with advantage. Yeah. So yeah, the satyr teleports in a flurry of autumn leaves, disappears and reappears next to the Nautic, and winds up its golden quarterstaff and begins cracking down on the creature. 14 points of damage for the first strike. Blue blood is now pouring out of the creature's side, uh, as is now bloodied. Oh, uh, one off a crit. Second hits as well. Go ahead and roll damage. It's looking very, very hurt now as the stun is... Uh, is giving it a lot of trouble. Yeah. Alright. Yep. Okay, he's looking very hurt, you guys. Um, is that it for your turn? That is it for my turn. Alright, this one's going to use half its movement. Get up, and uh, it's still in the wall of light. So it takes 11 points of light damage. And it's going to go... Movement here, and then movement up here. So finally one has made it out. Finally. One of them. Okay. Now for the stalkers. Uh, this one takes the light damage. It's no longer in the grease, so it moves up out of that, and also moves out. So you see another one. This is the first time you all are actually seeing it uh, in the flesh and not in a vision. And it looks like this. It's like a lankier version than the other ones. Yeah. Um, and it is going to take the dash action. Uh, Jeff, you can get an attack of opportunity if you'd like. Oh, yeah. I'll take a swing. Swing at it as it runs by you. Uh, hold on, I got It's gonna try to. Yep, that hits. You managed to catch it in the back. Uh, it is bleeding heavily now as it well, I was looking quite hurt as it came by you. It's gonna try to claw glare, uh, but misses uh, wildly with both attacks. Uh, okay. The other one is going to use half its movement to get up, then move forward once, and we'll see if it can um, not get, uh, not fall. Yeah, it actually doesn't fall, um, but that's that's all it can do, and it does take the light damage from still being in the wall of light. All right, Glare, you're up. There's lots of Nothics around now. They're the one that oh, just- I'm very well aware. Yeah, the one that just came up and tried to hit you looks very hurt, by the way. Blair just lets out a very, very loud roar. His gauntlet wraps around Fragrak, and he just slams down on the ground. That is a really low roll for Shatter. You guys hear a loud breaking noise. Oh god, I keep... Okay. Loud thunderous noise burst out from Glare as he slams the ground. And they all need to make on saves. On saves. DC 17. The big Damn. one succeeds somehow. Half damage. And then the other little guys. One succeeds and one fails. So, okay. Well, what's your save DC, Glare? 17. 
17. Okay. Okay, so actually both fail. So, 12 points of damage all around to these guys. So the one that tried to slash you just recently uh, dies. Uh, the other one, and like sort of bursts into just like green blood everywhere. The other two fail and take 12 points of thunder damage. Uh, and they're looking very hurt now. And the other one takes half damage for six points of damage. He's also looking really, really hurt. He's still stunned. I'm going to have to use my bonus action to uh, get a barrier, I think. All right. He loses his turn because he's stunned. And Mina is going to try to shoot a ball lightning at him. And let's see. She gets a how do you want to do this. Mina does. So she <laughs> shoots a ball lightning straight through the back of his head. <laughs> and coming out of his eyeball glare, you see a ball of lightning. <laughs> Shoot out and burst right in front of you, and the eyeball sort of bursts right in front of your face, and blood goes on you as the lightning ball oh, shoots. Gee, thanks. I can't tell if it's mine or his. Though. Oh, you're welcome. He's that dead. was sarcasm. He's dead. Zena, you're up. Okay. Um, how many are there? You Is see one. You see one ahead of you, and there's other ones that are in the light wall. We see one straight ahead. Which one looks to have the most most health? Uh, you, you, the one right ahead of you is the only one you can see. So you can just hit him. He looks like he has the most. He doesn't look bloodied or anything. He does. You could try to throw cookies over his head and try to hit the ones in the wall. Um. Well, I wanted to use blight. Oh. Yeah, you can't see the ones that are in that wall of light. But the other one's looking really bloody, so it'd probably be a waste. Yeah, I guess I'll just hit him. Okay. Go ahead and make a tackle. Uh, Alright, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. You crush him into the ground as blood squirts out and splatters this purple floor. Okay. Yeah, if you'd like, you can throw cookies. The other ones, like one, like one cookie. All right. Yep, that one hits. <laughs> okay, he's you hear a you hear a screech. All right. That's it for Zena's turn. Jeff, you're up. Where the other blue one go? He it, died. So oh. Lightning bolt hit him. Oh, well, shit. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna help blast one of his advantage again. Okay. Go for it. Alright. Yep, yep. Those all hit. Uh, first okay. one go, dies. Rich. And the second one takes 15 points of force damage. Okay. Is that it for your turn? Oh, yeah, sorry. You're up on your own. Step over here. Look up as a bonus action. Yep. Produce flame down that alley. Go for it. All right. If that. I don't know if that one hits. No, it just misses. You don't think it found purchase. It sort of goes into the wall of light and not seen it. Yeah, let's see that was... 15, so I can move back here and command my thing to go here. And hit the next Nothic that comes out of the, that thing. Okay. A Nothic comes out. Go ahead and make an attack roll for the... Seder, or the Seder that was winding up. Uh, 17. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. So, boom! It cracks it in the back of the head with a golden quarterstaff and green blood is pouring out of its central eye down its mouth and on its like sharp teeth into its gums. 
nasty looking creature. Yep. Uh, on its turn, it will try to uh, try to hit you, Glare, with um, make a Constitution saving throw, Glare. As it tries to look at you with its rotting gaze, actually with its rotting gaze. Yeah. It's a gaze of some kind that makes me feel like I'm rotting. Yes. 18. 18, you succeed. Uh, so nothing happens to you. No. I'm too distracted. <laughs> yeah, I you look at it. You, you just sort of looking down, like trying to wipe the blood off Fragorak or something. You don't really care. Um, Alright, it's your turn, though. Oh. I look up and see this thing's here all of a sudden. Oh! Uh. Fragorak. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and make attack roll. Bam. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Eight points of damage on the first hit. Okay. Second hit. Eleven points. How do you want to do this? As I look up and realize it's there and try to stare at me, I just swing frag rack, knock it to the side, and then the second one just goes right in its eye and drives it backwards, sliding across the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of slide this thing across the ground. It's frag rack. Look. Stuck in its eyeball, and it is lifeless. Okay. Just cleaned it too. All right. <sighs> Good job, everyone. I I shall dub that the Sunlight Plat Wombo Combo. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as the room goes quiet, you do see that. Um, there are all these planets here in this room, and there's a set of stairs that go up in the back. Oh, okay. I might need a breather. Oh. I walk up to Glare, and I slap him on the back, and I use Lay on Hands Okay. Uh, at four charges, so 20 points. Hey. Holy shit, all right. That's all my charges, though, so I can't use it again to a long rest. Uh-huh. I'm still bloodied. <laughs> F. I got really badly messed up in these last couple of fights. <laughs> eh, that's enough to keep going, though, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, so, so if I'm getting this right, you looked up, saw those things were coming, and had enough time to tell us that they were coming. Yes. Damn and also... Lucky. Yeah. Damn lucky elves. Ugh, anyways, I guess it saved our bacon. Since when do you do that wall thing, that light thing? Um, well. Since I got rid of the Ice Queen, I guess. Uh, that was a pretty good thing to remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not all I got up my sleeve, by the way. I am actually a little bit frightened. Anyways, <laughs> I guess we gotta figure out where the ritual is in this place, so everyone start looking around. Oh yeah, you were gonna read that Draconic stuff, weren't you, Mina? Yeah, she will read the Draconic uh, text, and she says... I'm gonna have to redo detect magic. Huh. It says... One moment. Welcome to the planetarium. Behold the wonders of the Skyward Realms. I was kind of hoping for this way too magical thing. Huh? No. This appears to be a planetarium. Shame. Can you look up again? Yep. And basically redo what I was trying to do before. Like compare the stars to what I've seen in Icewind Dale. Oh, okay. Traveling. Make a history check, I'll say, with advantage. All right. F. Yeah, you're not sure. It's like it's hard to piece all this stuff together, um, and you just don't have enough raw knowledge on the exact celestial bodies and what they are. But you do see, like, out of the ones here, you see one that is definitely the sun, right? And you definitely see one that looks like the Earth or Toril, and then one that's definitely the moon. The other one you see is looks like appear to be a, a gray 
giant planet, like a gas giant style planet, kind of like Jupiter, but gray. Um, and another one looks like, um, like a blue oceanic type planet um, as well. And yeah, those are the, the two that you don't really recognize. Does Detect Magic find anything in here besides the roof? All of the... Yeah, so the roof is magical, and the other ones are also magical, and they all are... Um, radiate a bit of divination as well as transmutation and magic. All the planets. Uh, the sun radiates ev evocation magic. Sorry. The others are transmutation, I think. I actually made the no, sorry, the blue one is made the sun. They actually made the sun a fireball. That's actually kind of hilarious. Hmm. Just as long as it doesn't go off while we're in here. Uh, I it's been inert for this long. I think we're fine. Can you imagine how long it's been since somebody's actually walked into this room? I mean, they had those caretakers, so there's been someone in here for a while. You go ahead and touch it. I'm oh, gonna I'm stand not, over here. I'm not touching it. It's fire. Why would I touch fire? I mean, I can think of several reasons you would touch fire. I was trying to throw you in it, anyways. <laughs> hmm. Is there anything? Do I notice the stairs in the back? Yeah, you see stairs in the back. Maybe it's on the other end of the stair stairwell. Uh, it's worth a shot. Okay. Yeah, um, Zia, you'd have to shrink to go up the stairs with them. Um, okay, I will. Yeah, so you do, 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 shrink down a bit. Uh, it's a bit of a tight squeeze as you all go up the stairs. Uh, who's leading the charge up the stairs? Uh, I guess Glare has detect magic, so I'll go up first. Okay, since you're leading the charge, you notice that the stairs of the planetarium terminate um, at a ceiling hatch above. Uh Okay, I guess Glare will push against it with Fragrag to see if he can push it up. Okay, yeah, it's unlocked. Um, and when you sort of, you just sort of, you sort of peek your, your eyes up, and you see in there that there is a um, creature that you've seen before. You saw one of these at the prison. Oh god, it's a fucking slad. Yeah, you see a green slad, except this one appears to be wearing, like, tattered robes, and it's looking through a, uh, um, uh, a telescope. It's, like, looking through this giant telescope, and it's wearing... Blair will slowly go back down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very stealthy, he's very good at that. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't notice you. Um okay. just yet. It seems to be paying attention to. You. But I'll go ahead and describe the room. It was a circular room covered with papers, debris, frenzied notes. Um there's this magnificent telescope that it was looking through the giant slad. Um there was a small table next to it, uh, which was a sphere of some sort, but you wasn't you weren't sure what it like what it was. And you saw that um well, that's all you saw from that vantage point. It's a sphere. Blair will turn and try to hand signal that there's a slat up there looking at a telescope. <laughs> How do you hand signal yeah. a slat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he like, he like a big know. lizard, I guess. <laughs> he like goes big and it's got like. It's Make got a performance like, check. <laughs> oh god! I want to see if you can actually communicate what this thing is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so he like he motions okay. like big, and then he's like, uh, like he does like a frog tongue thing. He's like, oh, and grabs a fly. <laughs> I'll say I'll say that Xena and Relbin probably get it. They're like, oh, the slad. So you can see Glare's sort of pantomiming. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here and just he's looking at like, a telescope. <laughs> what is he, what is it, a tiny fucking dragon in a bottle? What the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, exactly. Just slaps, just slaps. Just... Whisper and Elvin. It's a slad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what the fuck are we like... doing? Let's go freaking say hi. 
Glare just kind of tilts his head. <laughs> I mean, it that may work. Uh, I mean, either it's going to freaking work with us, or we're going to kill it. Glare just kind of shrugs and pushes up the hatch and, I guess, just goes up the door and kind of waits. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I walk in right behind him and I say, hello there! Uh, It will just sort of say to you, um, it's sort of, it seems to be very focused on this telescope and um she seems a little uh agitated as she goes leave this tower at once i will not tolerate any distractions uh well we kind of need something from this tower can we help maybe we could help you and you can help us persuasion check Um, she'll say, hmm, I'm searching for a way out of this place. Oh, Do you, you know, mean like, you mean like out of the, out of the city? Yes. I've avoided the Nothics for this long. Oh, well, well, we just killed like a dozen of them downstairs. Interesting. So what are you looking at with the telescope? I don't think it, you're going to be able to see many stars around here. I'm trying to find a way out of the glacier. I was going to say, she's probably looking for a hole in the ice, cat. Well, we just came from one, didn't we? Wait, what? Say that again? <laughs> we just came from one. Yeah, Where? We, uh, we, we came through a crevice that we created in the ice, and you probably we could just we walk your way we out. We created it. It was kind of there. It was like Shut up, cat! You don't need to know that. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> where, where is anyway, it? Anyway, so I'll, like, just kind of, like, I'll bring out, like, a scribble, like, a page or whatever, and, like, show her, like, the drawings crudely. You know what? I'm going to perform. Go for it. Yeah, I'll yeah, say so it's just kind of, like, you know, like, fifth grade level, like, little drawing circle of the city, just, like, a little squiggly out. It's that way. Well, I think he's trying to take your spot, Zuna. That's excellent. I don't want to draw, okay? Shut up. Um. All right, well, here's the thing. Thank you, first of all. Um, okay. But I feel like I owe you one. So, why are you here? Um, we're trying to uh, access the center tower, and we need all of the uh, keys to actually unlock the thing shield that's around it. Oh, well, it's in my old spell book, but there's a problem. You don't have your spell book. always is. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. you Where could... is your spell book? Well, if you use this telescope here, you might be able to find it. Uh, it'll be hard to see, though, but it's in the rubble somewhere. It'll let you use a arcane eye spell to search for the spell book. Ooh, I've always wanted to use that spell. But be careful, because it might pluck out your eyeball. Oh, God. I, you know, I, I actually don't really think it's that cool of a spell, if I was being honest. And uh... uh, what, what do we have to do to keep that from happening? Uh, just be very physically fit. <sighs> I just turn and look at Glare and see it. I'm just kind of like, uh, yeah, shrug. Right. <laughs> yeah. Glare will kind of cautiously go up and I guess cat try to use the telescope to see the uh, where the spell book is okay this will be either an intelligence investigation check or oh, that one that one that one <laughs> oh. okay yeah so yeah you can do that I can give him guidance all right you got guidance and um <laughs> Oh, fuck, didn't need it. <laughs> oh, <Jeez>. wow. <laughs> oh, fucking God. Yeah, so, Glare, you just sort of push the frog person aside. You're like, give me that fucking thing. Where I found it. <laughs> like, found look it. for like five <laughs> seconds off of it. There it is. Hey, I can see my house. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you see that it's sort of in this uh, rubble down near the front side of the tower. 
uh, buried underneath some rocks. You see, you just saw the corner of the spell book, but you instantly recognized it as a spell book. Uh, and yeah, you saw it. So. Oh yeah, that'll be easier. Yeah, I'll see it. <laughs> All right, well, thanks guys. Uh, I really appreciate go. it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Just, just be careful. There's still some nasty stuff in that cave. So just watch yourself. All right, thanks. It goes down, and you 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 sort of hear. It. As it sort of steps squishily down the stairs, and then you hear a, 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 a scream from it downstairs. What are all these mushrooms? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! That's so awful. awful! I also want to disengage my my light. So sorry. <laughs> How long does grease last? A minute? <laughs> Probably gone probably by now, but the mushrooms like gone. stay for a long fucking Light time. Light wall is like fucking like an hour or some shit. Yeah. Is it seriously? Yeah, I think so. All right, um, but yeah, you guys, you can go out, and I'll say you get the spell book. Uh, it's ten minutes, but still. Inside, you see the spell book. Uh, it has a lot of spells, by the way, um, in there uh, that you might want to look at later for you, Jeff. Yes. But it, the third inscription. Is in Draconic, and it's. Why the uh, hell is everything in Draconic with this goddamn tower? And I uh, why can't you just speak Draconic? Mina still has it up, I'll say, but she'll say draconic? it says third. A burnt palm loosens the tongue. Shed a secret about yourself for all to hear. Uh, uh, Blair's, Blair didn't hear that. He's still arguing with Jeff. Oh, okay. You go see. You look at the telescope. See if you can see this finger I'm giving you. Well, yeah, I don't need to. I see right there. Here, I got two right here for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you do. Man, it'd be, it'd be so nice if you had that web one Ooh. right now, wouldn't it? I swear to God, I'll do it. I'll I'll do it. We can't next time, I'll do it. I swear, Glare. Mm. <laughs> right, so we need to get the description now. Yes. <laughs> Mina's probably just, like, looking at us like we're a couple of idiots. He's like, are you all children done now? She's sorry. To hell ever. I'm like 30 years older than him. <laughs> Probably more. Glare's only like 23. All and right. I'm like 60. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys have that. You have the spell book. Um, actually, before I leave that, I'm going to post what's in the spell book for you, Jeff, if you can nice. make note of this for later because. Uh, I just get to pick one and spend gold to write it in my hotel. Yeah, this is yeah, this is uh because it's in a separate document and I don't want to have to re-reference this That's shit, fair. so I'm just gonna paste it right here. It has those spells in it. So yep, a few of those are really good uh, ritual spells too. Ooh, holy shit! Oh, those are good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What? Okay. <gasps> oh my god, see invisibility. Holy shit. I mean, I yeah. think I do. You can copy the ritual ones. So whichever one is ritual. Uh, hold on. I, I'm going to have to copy paste and look at it later. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. The comprehend the, language should be uh, ritual. Yeah. Detect magic, identify. It's not detect magic, it's detect thoughts. No, there's also detect magic right after comprehend language. No, that's detect thoughts. Look up. One line. Oh, I'm sorry. It copied on the same line. And identify? Damn. Too bad you already uh, have someone who's better at that. Yeah, I'll look at it later on and yeah. we'll figure one out. Sorry, my phone is not... My phone Discord is, like, not updating properly, so I'm trying to... Also, Saturn is headed to the restroom. Just FYI. Oh, yeah. No worries. Arcane Eye? So you guys see, by the way, that... um. The other note, the place of interest was a wellspring nearby. If you'd like to check that out. Oh, why the hell not? Okay. I'm going to take you there. So another... Take us for a ride. Another map. Uh, yeah. And so on this map, you see that there is a deep well that plunges through the city floor into darkness. Five crystal benches encircle it, glinting under the purple glow of a nearby street lamp. Oh. Uh, 
Okay, this looks important. Um, Mina will go up to a up to the well briefly and read a short sentence on that's engraved around the lip of it that says she goes herein lie the immortal remains of the telepathic pentacle sit meditate and learn that's what it says sit meditate and learn so the well is going to teach us something I assume we sit on the benches? I would say you're probably right about that. There's right. one well, per there's, bench. There's a bench for each of us. Alright, who wants to sit on a bench and try? Glare will definitely try it. Okay. I've been curious enough. Alright. Well, if everyone tries it, Xena probably would too. If she's away yeah. or not. Uh, Mina, on a bench. Mina will try. Everyone go up, put your character... I'm going to try too, and then I'm going to bring out my pipe and start smoking while I'm doing it. Okay. So everyone make... Uh, make wisdom insight checks. Wisdom as, insight. as you sit... Uh, on the thing. Uh, that would be... F... Okay, nothing from you, Relvin. Mm. Let's see if Xena gets anything. Ha! God fucking damn it. That sounds about right. Hey, Xena gets some stuff. Uh, Xena, are you still around? Is Saturn still there? She's probably still she's in the washroom. She's, she's gonna have to give her a few. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just roll for her. Um, she gets one clue from this table, so I'm gonna roll d20. Three. Oh, you guys already had that one. I'll troll again. Let's see. Oh, she learns that by law, every mage in the city was taught the prestidigitation cantrip and was obliged to use it to keep the city clean. Interesting. She learns that bit of lore. However, Jeff, uh, for you, Oh god. As you fail, you, you try to sit there and meditate, and you meditate, and you see a flash of something in your head, like something with a, like a gibbering, five-headed, disgusting aberration that has these thick, undulating necks, and you hear it begin to begin to make its way up out of the well. And that's where we'll stop for tonight. Uh, I thought you elves were supposed to be good at meditation. <laughs> Yay! Oh my god, please don't tell me that drawing a nat 1 summons that motherfucker. No, you had to fail the check by f more than 5. Uh, uh, and a 1 fails it by more than 5. So. Uh, Glare might have failed it by one more than 5, I don't know. Uh, you just barely didn't fail it by more than 5. Yeah, I kind of figured it was low. Okay. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you, guys. Uh, we will continue making our way through this really long dungeon of a city uh, next time. So, well. thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys, and we'll catch you next time. We'll pl play on Sunday. Well, actually, no. This Sunday... You're at the wedding. TBD. Right? I might be doing wedding stuff. Not sure if I'll be around Sunday, but if not, we'll pick it up Tuesday, but we'll try for Sunday, maybe. I really don't know what they're going to have me do. I'm going to try to tell them, like, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for me. That's it for us. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Good luck. Have fun. Don't die. Yay. That's for us.